Hey, it's Ron. So we're going to talk about subnetting real quick. Um, well, I'll try to make it real quick. I've, I'm always surprised at, at, at the people that come into my class uh, and uh, they've taken Network Plus, they're Network Plus certified, they've been working in uh, networking for a little bit, uh, but they can't do subnetting, which, like I said, it surprises me because to me subnetting is, uh, is essential knowledge uh, for your network. It's how you're going to make it more efficient. It's how you're going to more efficiently use your IP addresses. It has this whole kind of, uh, you know, this whole kind of facet of, of, of how your network functions. You're going to be able to look at an address, compare it to its mask and tell, okay, in this group of addresses, these are all the valid addresses. This is the network address. This is the broadcast address. You know, uh, if a packet comes in destined for such and such address based upon uh, how things are set up, it's going to be routed in this way. And, and so I think being able to understand subnetting at its uh, foundational level uh, will enable all of that. So I, it's essential knowledge. So I'm just going to quick go over, uh, you know, how the actual binary equivalents happen, how how it actually works in the background, and then we'll show you some, you know, quick methods for you know finding those addresses. So what I've got in front of you is uh, is binary uh, equivalents. All right. So binary is a base two system. I have a zero and I have a one instead of the base ten system, which we're all used to, where I have a zero through nine. So I have ten total digits that I can use. Uh, well, just as in the decimal system, the placement of those uh, numbers is important. So here. I have the zero place, the one place, the two place, the three place, four, five, and six, seven. Uh, what this means is, since I have two total digits, uh, it's two to the zero power, two to the one power, two to the two power, two to the three power, and all the way up. And what this uh, the decimal decimal equivalent then becomes one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one twenty-eight. So you'll see these numbers over and over again. You should have them memorized. Uh, it's really easy to figure out because you're just doubling the digits as you go. All right, so how do I represent a 10 in decimal? All right, so again, I'm I'm going with all of these digits. This is eight total digits because uh, when we get to IP addressing, IP addressing is represented by octets, four octets. So an octet is eight bits, uh, and you have four of those eight-bit groups to represent the 32 bits of an address. So we'll stick with this format even though I know you can represent it with less less digits. So to do it, uh, to represent a 10, uh, we're going to say, can 128 go into 10? No, it cannot. So we're going to represent this as a 0. Can 64 go into 10? No. Nor can 32 or 16. But an 8 can go in there. So we put a 1. Uh, so what are we left with? Uh, 10 minus 8, we're left with 2. So no for the 4, yes for the 1. And since we're out of digits, or we've already got down to 0, we have a 0 at the end. So this is the binary equivalent of 10. All right, so 8 plus 2 is 10. We can do the same thing for 150. So 128 can go into 150, and I'll bring up my calculator because my math is always horrid. So 150 minus 128 leaves us with 22. So no on there, no for 32, yes for 16, because 16 can go into 22. So minus 16. So we're left with 6. So no for 8, yes for 4. We're left with 2. There we go. So 6, which is 4 plus 2. All right. So now a 220. Uh, and again, we can go. We can go backwards too. We can say uh, uh, if I'm going to add these digits up, I'm only going to add the digits that have a one in them. So I'm going to go two plus four plus sixteen plus one twenty-eight, which is one fifty, which is what we're trying to get. So you can go both ways. Pretty easy. Uh, two twenty. Two twenty minus one twenty-eight is one ninety-two. So I'm going to have a one here. 64 can go into 192, so minus 64. I'm left with 28. I cannot put that in there. 
cannot put 32, but I can put a 16 in there. So minus 16, I'm left with 12. 12 I know is 8 and 4, psh, psh, and zeros. So there we go. So we can do 128. Oops. Let me kill that. 128 plus 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4, 220. So it adds up. Now, 255 and 0, you're going to see all the time uh, when you're talking about uh, your subnet masks. Uh, if you're talking about a broadcast address, broadcast address are represented as all ones, which happens to be the decimal equivalent of 255. So this is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And we can add all those up together, but I'm telling you, it equals 255. All right? And then obviously, all zeros equal 0. All right? So. That's how we, we're going to go back and forth in between the decimal equivalent and the binary address. And then 255 is all ones, zeros is all zeros. All right. So when we get into classful addressing, we talk about class A, class B, class C, and class D, uh, and class E. All right. So A through C, you're going to see pretty typical. Class Ds, you're going to see in multicasting. Uh, and class E's, you're really not going to see. These are experimental addresses that I have never personally used. All right. Now you have masks, default masks for these classful addresses. Uh, and again, remember, an IP address is 32 bits. Uh, an octet is 8 bits. So we can represent these 32 bits with 4 octets. And we do that by separating them by decimals. All right. The default mask for a class A is 255.0.0.0. This means that the first uh, 8 bits are all 1's. Then we get down to class B. The first 16 bits are all 1's. And then we get to a class C where the first 24 bits are all 1's. All right? So these 1's in the mask are going to represent the network portion. So when we talk about a class A address, we're, we're only talking about this first octet as being the network. When we talk about class B, the first two octets represent the network. And then class C, the last or the first three octets represent the network. So what this leaves us with is uh, the last three octets in a class A can represent a host. The last two octets in a class B can represent a host. And the last octet in a class C represents the host. Alright? So this means that we have a couple of networks here and a ton of hosts. We have a balance here between networks and hosts. And in the class C, we have uh, a lot of networks and a few hosts. All right. So depending upon what kind of network you're trying to build and how many hosts you're trying to represent, you can, you know, typically use, you know, the, the different classes that's that's basically going to represent how your how your network is is, is going to be set up uh, now how do we come up with the the range values uh, for those uh, network addresses all right well in a class a we say that the first bit has to be zero and then the last seven bits can be whatever so if we start out with all zeros we're going to have a zero if we start out with all ones it means I can go up to 127 because this first bit has to be 0 the rest of them all ones it equals 127 class B 1 0 so we go with all zeros and then we go with all ones so we get a range of 128 to 191 do the same method for class C but using a 1 1 0 and we end up with 192 through 223 class D and class E work the same ways but the range comes out to be 224, 239 to 240 to uh, 255. All right. So if we are given an address 192.168 uh, we know this first first address is 192 so it's a class C address. If I'm given a, a 127.0.0.1 which is the loopback address of a computer it it actually falls within the class A addresses because it's 127. All right. 172's are pretty common uh, in uh, class B's and it falls between these two numbers so I know oh, anything represented by 172 
is part of the class B's. All right. So once we uh, figure out which class we're in, uh, we know then the mask that's going to be assigned to those networks. And we're talking classful here. Uh, so these are the defaults. And we, we look at the host portion. So these portions that are represented by zeros here. So if we take this mask and apply it to whatever the actual IP was, so let's say 192.168.0. something, we say the first three octets are part portion are the network portion, and that very last octet, which the, the I think it was .1, uh, is the host portion, and we say if in that host portion, if we see all zeros, we're representing the network itself, the network address. If we see all ones, then it's a broadcast address. And I'll show you how that works out here in a bit. So let's let's look a little bit more at a classful address. So we have 192.168.0.212. Let's say that's the, the IP that got assigned to my computer. Uh, and I'm using the default classful uh, mask of 255.255.255.0. All right, because that's the default. So these are all the decimal or the binary equivalents. And one, one method that we can use to kind of break it apart uh, is comparing this to this. So if there's a 1 here, we're going to copy it down uh, here. So we have a 1-1 one, one, and there's a 1-1 one, one here. So we're going to copy this entire thing. So we end up with exactly what's up here. 192.168.0. And uh, there are zeros in this portion, so we don't copy those because these are hosts. So this is just a host in that network. So uh, we're not going to copy this. And for the network address, we're going to make all the hosts zeros. So we end up 192.168.0.0. All right. This represents the network. All right. Now, if we make all these host bits ones, okay, because this says these zeros say this is a host bit. So we come up here and we make these all zero or all ones. We're going to come up with the broadcast address. So 192.168.0.255. Alright. Now the network and the broadcast aren't usable IPs that I can assign to a host. I can't assign a computer those addresses if I'm using this mask. So I have to subtract uh, these out from the total number of hosts that I can have. Well, there are 250, 256 numbers that I can represent with 8 bits. Uh, so I can do 256 minus 2, which is 254 usable IPs. All right. Now, I could also just say it's between 0 and 255, so my usable hosts are 1 through 254. All right. 